think we can talk about this stuff in church. <laughs> this is where we should be talking about it. This is not long enough. Yeah. <laughs> more time. Mike, thank you for coming. It's, it's been place. so great to get to know you and Natalie and Benton. I know who's, uh, who's with you today. I want to sort of press in a bit more on what you were talking about this morning, Claire. <laughs> about, you use that phrase, the pace of grace. Yeah, yeah. I, I want you to talk about how this works out in marriage. Now, this part, I'm talking about money sex. Yeah. Now, in power, the sort of, if we're powerful as a couple, that means serving each other. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, I think, I think the key to this is what my brother was talking about. When you're in marriage, um, God never meant for marriage to be between two people. It was supposed to be between three. Yeah. Your spouse, your husband and wife, and God in the center of it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is power comes, a power struggle comes because we don't have somebody to be the tiebreaker. So either she's right or I'm right. But when you put the, the Holy Spirit in the middle of it, he'll tell both of you you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or he'll check you on what, what, what you did right or what you did wrong or you need to apologize or you need to sacrifice. And I think a lot of people just come into it with not with not the right team combination. They're trying to be a man and a wife instead of God, a man and a wife. Yeah. In the beginning, it was Adam, Eve, and God, and they walked together in the cool of the day. And it was those three people together that made this amazing life. But remember, when they failed, it was Adam and Eve doing something by themselves. And they, they, they allowed the serpent, the wrong team member, to start, start speaking to them. And that's when they got kicked out of paradise because they were using the wrong person. So when it comes to um, this whole thing about power in marriage, I really think that we need to know where the power comes from. And it's God. And it takes us being humble enough and submitted enough, uh, submitted enough to keep that relationship first. Yeah. And when you keep the relationship with God first, it doesn't take away all the other a natural things that we have to deal with, it just brings us back to a sinner that neither one of us have to have the answer, that we know somebody who does have the answer, yeah. and that he uses other things like therapy and wisdom and accountability and God, God, this is the one thing I say, God speaks three different ways. He, he speaks um, through his word, and, and that, if you ever need to hear from God, open up that Bible. And a lot of people want it to be so deep and mystical and all this other stuff. Open up the way he speaks to us through prayer and impressions. So when we spend time in his presence, he also speaks to us through other people. Mm. And that's why I love the fact that you guys are bold enough to have people who've walked through situations, actual therapists. The church, a lot of times, if you're having issues, they say, just pray about it. Yeah. Well, dang, I need that. <laughs> I, need some, I need some more help. I need the 20 years of education she got to, to give me. A, and so I believe God can speak through all these different ways, and that'll help us get back to where we're supposed to be. Wow. You were fantastic, guys. We really loved it. Just tell us, I, I want you to get really practical. Okay. So you, you talked actually this morning about the sabbatical taking 30 days off. That was just yeah. fantastic. You were doing that in the summer. Um, how do you protect your marriage? How do you nurture your marriage? Get really practical. Okay. Tell us what you do on a day to day basis, week to week basis. Okay. So I'm going to just start what's on the top of my heart. The first thing you have to do to protect your marriage is get everybody out of your marriage who doesn't want it to work. Amen. Like, no, so I'm, I'm telling you right now, and that includes family members, yeah. mm -hmm. mothers and fathers, mm -hmm. that includes your besties mm -hmm. and your friends. Mm -hmm. Everybody who does not want to see you win, mm -hmm. they cannot speak into it anymore. Wow. Yes. Because that's why the Bible tells us that, that when a man finds a woman, they're supposed to leave and That's cleave. Clean. Yeah. They're supposed to leave the yeah. thing that was familiar and that knew them beforehand because I'm about to become somebody new. Mm -hmm. And when a butterfly goes into a, a, a caterpillar goes into a cocoon, it doesn't go into a cocoon with all its homeboys yeah. <laughs> and all its girlfriends. It's not getting an update to see if ever, do you like, do you like how my, my wings are starting to form? When you become married, let's, let's be honest, when you're becoming married, you're becoming a new person. Yes. And if people who were on the ground with you don't want to see you fly, oh. 
They'll speak words in there to make you doubt what God's doing in your heart. Mm -hmm. And they'll say stuff like, well, you never used to be like this. Maybe I'm becoming something different. <laughs> like, I'm not who I am. So the first thing to protect your marriage is you got to watch who you let speak into it. Mm -hmm. And because life and death is in the power of the tongue. 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 And, and it's the tongue. other thing. Faith comes by hearing. And the Bible says hearing the word of God. That's the right thing you want to hear. But faith also comes by hearing the wrong thing. Yeah. So when you get people speaking the wrong thing into you, you start to be built faith in those things. Mm -hmm. And those are the wrong things to build faith in. So cut out all the haters. That's the first Woo! thing. Yeah. Um, the second thing to protect your marriage is that you have to have guarded time. Mm -hmm. Like you have to have guarded time. So my wife, first few years of our marriage, I thought gifts was her love language because I like gifts. And so I would be getting her stuff. She's like, oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I just spent all this money on this. So I set up this whole thing. But what I found out um, by doing um, Gary Chapman's five love languages is that her number one thing is quality time. Yeah, yeah. And that will cost no money. Yeah. <laughs> but it was more expensive to me because it took, it took my, it's my lowest. So mind is physical touch and words of affirmation. Have sex with me and tell me I'm the best. She let me slow down, turn my phone off, and and just sit there. Like, what are we doing? Just enjoy it. And last night, we made love. <laughs> 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 
friends that are. Um, and they're always wondering just how to be single in the church. Um, what advice would you give to a single female than men? Um, and how can we support our single friends? Because sometimes church can be quite lonely for single people. Yeah. 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 You know, in the Bible, Jesus upholds marriage and he upholds singleness. And we want to say that, proclaim that loud and 